It's said that George Washington freed all of his slaves in his will upon his death. But did he though? What's up everybody? This is the first in a series on our founding fathers. Uh, the, with the release of the smash Broadway hit Hamilton on Disney Plus, the founders of this nation have become a popular topic. This episode I'll talk about some truths and some myths about the father of the United States, George Washington. We all know who our man George is. Months ago, you and your neighbors stood on that hill, Bunker Hill. The myth, the legend, George Washington. My friends, I am humbled and honored that you would consider me for such an important role. I did not expect for this All right, you've been showing up in a military uniform every day for the last 10 months. We all know you wanted this, so cut the crap, George. Dude. The sheer folly. I got my face on a quarter. You got drawn in quarters. Tortured on the orders of a king. Did you chop down our cherry tree? I cannot tell a lie. Yes. And what is this pamphlet I found under your bed called the Boston Key Party? Not mine! Washington is like, the Continental Army is f***ed. Ah! Get the president! Ah! 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 Born on February 22, 1732 in the British colony Westmoreland County, Virginia, he was the oldest of six and spent his childhood at Ferry Farm in Fredericksburg. His father died when he was 11, and it's likely he went home to help his mother with the plantation after that. Fast forward to four years later, it's believed that he already finished his formal schooling, and since he was exceptional at math, became a surveyor. Going on surveying ex expeditions into the Virginia wilderness earned him enough money to start buying land of his own, which leads us to freeing of the slaves. Upon his death in 1799, G.W. owned around 300 slaves. Before he died, he had become opposed to slavery and in his will ordered that his slaves be freed after his wife Martha's death. However, 176 of those slaves were known as dower slaves who were transferred to him from Martha's first marriage. Therefore, by law, G to the dub had no legal rights to free these slaves, so instead they were inherited by Mrs. Washington's descendants. Everyone knows that First George couldn't tell a lie, right? A popular legend in the G dub's lore is the famous story of how he chopped down his father's cherry tree and when questioned about it, fessed up immediately. However, this story most likely never happened. It was fabricated by Parson Mason Weems. Since so little is known about this founding father's childhood, Weems invented several anecdotes such as this one about G. Money's life to convey that the heroic characteristics he showed as an adult were always present. Another popular myth is that the Mount Vernon sage wore wooden teeth. It's true he began losing his teeth in his early 20s and was forced to wear several sets of painful dentures. When he became president on April 20th, 1789, he only had one of his own teeth remaining. His dentures were made of a variety of materials, but not wood. They were comprised of hippopotamus ivory, gold, lead, and even human teeth. Wood was not even commonly employed by dentists in G-Man's era. One of these sets of dentures fit so poorly that they distorted the shape of his mouth. Why are these facts that we know and have learned since grade school not actually facts at all? Well, we've been playing a 246-year game of telephone. The line has been so distorted over the years that we didn't realize that these ironclad facts that everyone knows were completely made up. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that, that bell for notifications so that you get, you get to see all future episodes. Tune in next week for the continuation of this Founding Fathers series. I'll be discussing everyone's current favorite founder, Alexander Hamilton. His name is Alexander Hamilton. See you next week.